Hello YouTube, and I'm back with another episode of Mad Mike's Garage. It's not about honeybees, so my longtime subscribers can see some garage content. Uh, we are working on a Honda EU 3000i generator. I received this particular generator free in non-running condition from a guy I work with. Uh, he had taken it to a shop. They said that it had no compression. Uh, I checked everything. The, the compression was low. I made sure the valves were doing what they were going to, supposed to do. Everything was working. <clears throat> when I pulled off the, uh, uh, the, I guess this is basically like, <clears throat> this is like your little valve cover here. I pulled it off. Everything looked okay. So then I toured the rest of the, the engine down and, uh, the uh, the piston rings were worn so <clears throat> but the cylinders in really good shape so I don't know if you can see in there but I've already I've already honed it and I used this $15 hone off of uh, Amazon I'll throw that link in the description uh, I also bought a brand new set of rings I got them and I'll put that in the description and then I kind of cheaped out and, and got the the knockoff gaskets for the carburetor that tore when I took it off and I think I'd be fine there. I am waiting on the OEM Honda head gasket. I didn't cheap out on the head gasket. So um, it looks like pretty decent uh, manuals to, uh, to, to get you by if you need them. Uh, you'll need your torque specs and such. So the first thing I'm gonna do is throw the piston together, <laughs> put the rings on the piston. And uh, what we're gonna do here is you don't want anything lining up with your wrist pin on either side so what you're going to do is put your top ring well you're going to start with your oil rings and you want to stagger those and those ones as well so you'll have two oil rings that you can stagger <clears throat> and then your two compression rings you'll put one on on one side of this skirt and the other one on this side of the skirt uh, and the only other thing is Sorry, let me pull these out so I can show you. Here are your piston rings. These, these two tiny ones are your oil rings. And then here is a, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but there's a T on there. These, trust me, there's a T right there. That, that means that's the top. And then here's another one. This one might show up a little bit easier. There's a T on that one as well. The uh, silver one goes on the very top and the, they call it black. It, it goes in your second groove. With your, your T's facing up, and then of course you have your <clears throat> one oil ring, your scraper, and then your other oil ring and then you'll put this one like this and then you'll put this one opposite so your gaps are not all in the same spot because you'll get a lot of blow by and pressure down you know in your crankcase where you you know which is blow by so uh heading over <clears throat> here to the head uh i got everything out of my sonic cleaner and i thought oh crap i lost something you know I'm like, well, that's a valve seal, but I only have one valve seal. I thought it had fallen out of the head, which it, this one apparently had. And I'm like, well, great. I looked all around. I couldn't find it. Well, then I pulled the manual up, and it only has one one exhaust or one valve seal. And, it, of course, it goes on your on your intake valve. I would have lost that bet. And you can see in here on the head where it's lighter colored where that one was, and this one's dark. Uh, it does, it never had a, a seal, a valve seal on the exhaust side. I, hell, I don't know. Explain that one. So, and then I also found something when I was looking for the valve, the valve seal, it shows there should be a little, they call it a valve rotator. It looks like it's just a little, uh, assembly that's supposed to go on the exhaust valve and mine did not have that when I took it apart so somebody may have been into it at one point but it said if you don't put it on there 
that it uh your you know your exhaust valve could drop and get in your piston so we don't want that so i'm waiting on i'm going i'm going to go ahead and get a new valve seal as well and that rotator which should be here tomorrow so i'm going to start by putting the rings on the piston assembling it in and then i will look up the torque spec and get the torque spec for the uh for the connecting rod and then once that's done um we have to put our camshaft back in and i can show that real quick as well here's a little dot right here you, you'll see um actually it's right here there's your dot you can see that and then this one's going to be real tough to, to, to show but there's a dot punched into one of these gears and it is right here there's a little dot right there punched in so we'll <clears throat> when you're done you'll line that up of course your camshaft will go right in there that's its its home and then uh of course these uh i guess they're kind of like tappets they go they go in here on, on, on the block and this is what actually rides on your camshaft so they fit up inside just like this that's their happy home and then once that's in then we have our side cover uh, I, I cheaped out when i took the side cover off as you can see the gasket didn't tear it looks good we're just gonna ride to grandma's house with that so there's the rest of my hardware uh the covers some of these covers are be i'm not going to re record all of it until i figure out what i'm doing because i didn't take the stuff all off so i'm gonna have to, to do a lot of research uh to make sure i get everything together with the correct hardware but that will be after the engine's running and i make sure everything's charging so uh i did like i said take the engine out of this this was a pretty decent uh pretty easy there was a uh, <clears throat> some connections right in here and and there's another one it's kind of hidden but what you'll do is you'll take this bolt out here and this whole uh this whole piece uh it's hinged right here and it's real easy to get into all your uh wiring so okay i think that's a good enough intro don't want to bore you too much so i'm gonna work on this piston and then Work on getting in the cylinder, and I'll be back with an update. All right, guys, we're going to throw the rings on the piston here quick. I have, I have my helper, and he's learning about putting an engine together here today. So, <clears throat> six is not too young to learn. So, what we're going to have here is our oil rings. These ones do not have a preference on what side they are. And here's your scraper. So you're going to put one of these in oh. and make sure you rotate the, the gaps. You don't want all the gaps in the same place. Ooh. So you'll start at the one end in the groove and then you'll work <clears throat> delicately, work the other end into the groove. And you don't want any of them lining up with your with your piston hole here. So we're gonna spin this one. So the gap is right, right we'll just do it right here. <clears throat> now, we'll put our scraper ring on. That's the, the one that looks kind of rough. Uh, we're gonna key it so it falls in right here. Oh, that's cool, Dad. Yes, it is. So now, Trying to get this one here to and that's cooperate. So, <clears throat> and that's so satisfying how it just like goes in. It's satisfying. Huh? Okay, so I am going to continue to try to get this in. And. Oh, it's another one. See what we got going on here.
Welcome back, YouTube. Here we have, there's our one gap in the top scraper ring. And then here's the, the gap <clears throat> on the other one. Move them more off to this, off to the side. I don't want them straight on to the, to the bore here. So I need to move this one over. <clears throat> and then we'll start with our, our other rings. So th this one's here. This one's here. That's good. Here we go just a little bit more. I'm not completely sure why it said do not line them up with the, the piston, but we're fine. So this, <clears throat> the black colored one is the second one or the next one we put on. Is our, and then <clears throat> the silver one goes on top. And there is a T in the top of each of these. So we want to line these up with the T up. This one here, I'm going to face this way. Of course, the other one will be the other way. So these are uh, pretty gentle. You have to be pretty gentle with these and just slowly open them up. Sorry if I if you missed some of that. I just use, they make, they make tools for this. I don't have one. All the more rings I've been putting on these days, I feel the need to go out and buy one for one piston here and there. So, so here's our top ring. Our gap is on this side, which we can adjust it later. Um, there we go. And... That is one piston with rings. So now I need to get my oiler out. You want to oil all these rings up really good. Uh, this particular piston goes in the cylinder. With the, uh, with the connecting rod in this position with the dipper down. So that's how it slings it will. Like I said, I'll get I'll get some oil on the on the rings, and then <clears throat> I need to see if I can figure out if I have one of those. I'm not gonna have one for the right size to to squeeze these in, so uh, I'm gonna have to do a little shade shade tree uh, shade shade tree mechanic in to get these in here. But <clears throat> generally, you would want to have a piston ring installation tool to put the rings on. And then also have uh, the piston install sleeve that compresses your ring so you can drop it in. Um, I have neither, but I have, I'm confident I can get this in there. So stay tuned. Okay, YouTube. I grabbed a little bit of oil <clears throat> so I can lube everything up here. Can't really put too much on. <clears throat> I'm reaching in here and putting some on the crank, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the do the cylinder and the ring. So, so this is uh, definitely not. high dollar rebuild here I did get my uh, head gasket and I'm thinking I might have gotten ripped off I don't know does Honda make parts in China now I don't know but it says Honda but it says made in China and it also does not look like the head gasket that came off of the engine it looks like the cheap Amazon knockoff head gasket Okay, now that we have that part done, I'm going to uh, do the, the piston rings, and you got to make sure you get a lot of oil in, in these grooves. <clears throat> I should have technically probably had oil on the piston rings before I even put them in, but 
This will do, pig. This will do. I hate to admit that I thought that that came from Charlotte's Web until like a week ago. Wrong. Wrong movie. So. Okay. Piston rings are good. Now I just need to make sure my gaps are where they need to be. That one's there. Yep. We are good. <clears throat> so... mark here on your piston that's telling you that goes down so you'll put it in the cylinder like this you can also see there's discoloration on this up on top but your your rod this part of your rod goes on the bottom so we are going to gently 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 put this in here <clears throat> get it down onto the crank which it shouldn't reach before I start actually getting to the point where um, there we go <clears throat> guys seen enough of that playing with the cameras tricky trying to get the best shots I can um, now comes a fun part of getting the, <clears throat> the ring squeezed and popping this piston in hello YouTube we now have our our piston is in its happy home I had to have my son help me and I pushed in on both sides with a screwdriver while he lightly tapped it in with the end of a wooden uh, mallet. You use the, ha the handle side and just tap, tap, tap. Went right in. I don't have the actual tool that you should have for this. I don't do what I do, but that's what I did to make it work. And I torqued these, the connecting rod cap bolts, to nine foot pounds, which is 108 inch pounds. So at this point, I'm going to put in the uh, the valve. I guess these would be the. Um, I'm not sure the name. But these are the pieces that the camshaft rides on that run your push rods. And once I get that on, I just need to line up the. Uh, timing marks here and we'll drop the camshaft in and I already showed there's a there's a dot here on the teeth and there's also a dot right here on the plastic gear that we need so you need to get everything nice and happy there so everything will work well for you so I think that's it let me see where we're at here Yes, that's perfect. So hopefully, I can get a decent shot for you guys there in YouTube land. We we'll use the end of this screwdriver here. Sorry. There's your dot on your plastic gear. And there's the dot on your steel gear on the end of your crank. They line up. Good to go. So now we're ready for our, our side cover. It's kind of funny to think that that's all you really need to take off to rebuild one of these. The crank bearings seem fine. Um, you have your low oil pressure sensor in the very bottom of the crankcase, but like that's it. 
that's all that's in there. So we'll set this on and uh, yep, you'll have your two, these are your guide pins, you gotta make sure they're there. out here because it wants to be there we go it was just being a little a little difficult on that cam bearing and I will have to find the torque spec for these covers here these cover bolts I don't have it on me at this current I will find that torque spec and be right back Alright everybody at home, we have just torqued these to 17 foot-pounds or 204 inch-pounds. So now we're getting ready to work on the head. So I'm going to have to adjust the camera. I'll get you spun around, get our push rods in, and start working on our valve train. Alright everybody at home, I just cleaned the surface with a, like a Scotch-Brite pad on a wheel. Um, sorry. The uh, the two alignment pins go in the bottom, and then here's our supposed to be original OEM Honda gasket that's not made anything like the original. I can't see any markings that say top and bottom. So, well, yeah, that's that pretty much just solved that one can only go this way so boom there she is don't mind that massive flex of an arm that you just saw okay we got yes this way and I have the four bolts here and our nice freshly cleaned cylinder head let's get our cylinder head ready for assembly here what we have here and they will only go one way here this valve is bigger the intake valve as you can see here's your exhaust valve the intake valve just it just won't fit it's like they were thinking of me when they when they built this you, you can't put the valves in the wrong spot so that's good and uh we'll pop it over here and this is our <clears throat> our intake valve and i have here is the old valve seal I bought a brand new valve seal. I'll put a little bit of fresh oil around there. And then the spring will go down and ride against that and hold that down. So, both of the valve valve springs are the same both the retainers are the same there is one little difference and I'll get ready to show you and it's as simple as that and your exhaust valve is in <clears throat> and then we'll get over here on the intake valve we'll do the same thing you just hold underneath sorry push down not a whole lot of pressure here we'll have our uh, push rods to place in before we completely tighten it down let's move you guys up here a little bit and uh, hopefully this goes smoothly 
Okay. Whoa, watch out guys. Hope you're not hope you're not the uh of the dizzy variety, because I just gave you a a whack there, so I'm gonna get all this stuff lined up and uh I'll be right back. Hello friends at home. We torqued our cylinder head bolts. The same as our side cover, 17 foot-pounds, 204 inch-pounds. Um, now it's going to be time to throw the valve cover on. And then I'm going to start setting it in the frame and seeing what for bracketry I, I need to get that job done. All right, this was a little bit of Tetris to get this grommet in the side here but I got it um, you have to go over the studs first for your uh, they're basically for your carburetor and your linkage and stuff uh, you need to put that end on first then you need to push pretty hard to get it past the, the flywheel here and then you need to tilt your grommet at a real steep angle and then push it on and then I also took this back off because I realized that this cover gets bolted through these holes as well which is why I was coming up a little confused on the bolting hardware so <clears throat> this will sit in here just like yeah. and then I'm not sure if we need this size or this size it's one of these ones uh, I'd say pretty sure it's going to be these uh, the longer ones because those short ones aren't going in very far so and once I get in all these covers uh, the, the torque values switch from internet Honda site values to bad mic ugga dugga torque specs As long as you know that it's aluminum and you don't need to go full you know what everything will be fine this is one piece I didn't clean up I wish I would have but I did not if it's on just like here and here I will throw a, a wrench on them just to get a little better feel on them. I didn't want to get crazy. So there's our first cover. And then we'll see how this progresses. As you can see, there's a nut here. I'm not sure if there's anything else that gets held by that. So at a later time, I'll find that out. And if not, um, I mean, for this, you know, for right now, I can throw a nut on here. But I'm pretty sure that that probably doubles uh, for something else as well. So... <clears throat> at this point it'll be time to get this into our chassis over here okay before we get too far and getting the engine into the end of the chassis I need to take this bolt out which I've showed earlier if it makes the cut and then this hinges out which allows to get in to the connections that we need to to make all this happen. You'll need this one and then there's a connector here, there's a connector, there's one down 
Uh, well, I guess it's right here. So we'll, we'll get all them on. And well, we'll get the engine set in. And that's our first, our first job is to get the wiring harness uh, directed into this hole here. <clears throat> this grommet right here on all this. So all this needs to go in there. So I'll get all that situated and I'll be right back. Okay. We got our grommet in here. And I, I reconnected our oil, the low oil pressure um, set up. So now that the engine's in, I need to uh, start these nuts so the engine don't fall out. There on the bottom of the, the rubber isolator mounts. So they are. Perfect. And apparently I didn't have it right. There we go. Wasn't quite through the whole way. This engine is technically not going anywhere now. So, I'll try to get a decent shot here for you guys. I might need, I might need to move you back down. Okay. There we are. Hopefully we can see in here. So this wire here that I said earlier, that actually connects to the front. We don't even need that one. So, well this one's gonna be tough, but this one here hooks into this one. Sorry guys. This one hooks into this one here. So these, these two will hook together and then the, these all hook into right down in here on this I guess that's like your I don't know rectifier what, what do you call the that's the that's the electric side of everything and then this this ground actually hooks in with this ground and it turns into one lug it's pretty neat so I'll get all this plugged in and then I'll get a light in there and show you we have all of our electrical hooked up now uh, I almost didn't remember about that ground right there, there's two wires that run to that. There's also that connection right there that goes into a little, I don't know if that's a rectifier. This here, it's bolted onto the shroud. And then of course you have your, your connections inside here. This one here, this one here. And then there are two connections right here unplug all them and your engines out we are now going to move over to the carburetor side and get all this intake figured out and then get on work on getting a fuel tank on <clears throat> and i'm gonna see what we have going on as far as uh bringing any life to this because the rest of those plastics aren't going to make it run any better so I want to make sure it actually runs and before I go the whole way welcome back YouTube okay this video is going to be extremely long and I'm aware of that but this is one of them jump around find what you need if there's something in here that you know goes with the assembly you know just jump around, do what you need to do. I'll edit it as best I can, but I can't promise much. This will be the first piece you put on. The gasket I already have against the uh, the cylinder head here. This is just like a phenolic plastic spacer. <clears throat> so this 
So this will go on. Next step will be the carburetor. There's a couple holes down in here that these vent lines will feed into. So this one's a little, little snug getting started, but there's just enough room to get it. And no one back. Okay. I may need to. No, we're good. Like I said, you can't see it, but there's two holes in the housing that both of these uh, vent lines will run into. So next will be the. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what this is for. here and this one goes there now of course I was wondering where my extra barrel went I was a little concerned until I got to this stage and realized that it wasn't let me just pull that back off it's being a pain so we'll just put it on that way that inside one's a little little tight getting to perfect okay here we go Locate me another nut here. Dude, we've gotten a little farther. I have to tighten up these bolts on the muffler, but I put this plastic plate in. It has insulation. There's two bolts to hold it in. Down here is the bolt that the coil goes on. There's a bolt here, and the other bolt is down here at the bottom end of this coil. And that's what holds that on. And you do have one negative wire that runs, well, I guess it'd be your, it'd be your signal wire running from your <clears throat> stator over to your coil. And you can see it down there. It hooks on to the bottom of the coil right there. You, so once you get that all unhooked, you're good. The, the muffler assembly is really gra gravy to put on. It's not bad. You have one nut here. You have your two mounting bolts or nuts that hold it to the cylinder. And then you have one right here in the back. And that's what holds the muffler on. And I just sat this on here for now. You're gonna have this assembly holding the back. And as you can see here in the front, these two, you have two bolts there. You take that out and then that really opens up the engine so you can get it out. We have the handle, just the four bolts there to hold that on. And now I'm gonna start tackling the cover that goes over the other side. Okay, this black piece that has the insulation inside, it just it's just a snug fit. You you push it down in the bottom first and then line this channel up, push it together, and it just has these little spring clips. There's four of them. That's what holds this on. I started to put this one on and I realized I need to put the side panels on first. So I'm go ahead go ahead and do that. Here we are with our side panel in you got one two three four screws this is a one that holds the back panel on <clears throat> and then honorable mention you'll need to take this rubber piece where the indentation is get a little screwdriver in there and pull that up and it, there's a phillips screw in there and that's what holds it on it's keyed it's keyed so you don't have to worry about figuring out how it goes back on, back on later and that's how you'll eventually be able to get your, your cover on. So, let's work on the other side. We have the fuel tank side to put on. This side cover, we have, there's a plug, you, you pull that plug out. There's a big screw right here and there's two big ones right here and they have real, real wide collars on them. You won't be able to get those mixed up and of course, there's another one here in the front. Who come down here. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. This one and the one that's 
I guess this one doesn't have one on the high side. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is get in and, and do the, uh, we're going to do the front, put the uh, on off choke set up on and we'll start working on the back after that okay we're approaching the the home stretch now we put the back cover on which is there's a screw here there's one down here there's one over here you also need to put the be the your breather tube there's a phillips um clamp right in there that you'll need to uh tighten up right there and then uh we have some small panels that go on around uh, around the exhaust and around the carburetor and air cleaner and this little access for your uh, oil fill all right after you get your clamp in there i did miss misspeak there's a there's three screws on the top and then there's this this one on the bottom that holds this outer shell in and then you have one screw that holds the piece that goes over the muffler and then you can't forget about your uh apparently this is a pvc setup i don't know this goes in here there's an arrow there's a slot for it probably easier yeah easier to put the bottom one on first i think it's not a and it give you a lot of room to get it in there, but it's in there, and it just has spring spring clamps on. I got a little ballsy doing all this without uh, even test firing this, but I, I kind of just wanted to see if I could get it all together because I never took any of this apart. So here's a bit, the handle. It slides in the back then when you get all that on, and. It's my old Harbor Freight set. Looks like a five. Five millimeter. Sorry. My eyes aren't what they used to be, guys and girls. Hold on a minute. I about screwed up. Apparently, this can only go one way it, it, I mean it would have it would have went on that way but it, it wasn't matching the molding on the plastic behind it so now we're cooking with fire okay I'm proud There's barely anything left over Yeah, there wasn't too much there was another for some reason the only other thing that was the allen head on here was that there's a plastic bar that runs across and connects the front to the back and it has two allen heads that are five millimeter in the back and one one up here the rest of it's all been uh 10 millimeter 12 millimeter and then the phillips on all these covers so uh excess oil that I accidentally spilled right there. Look guys, this, I'm the type that, this is the kind of stuff that just gotta have it. Just gotta have it right. Oh, there we go. Now we have, apparently we got some ground effects on this. I, there's no, there's no hardware, just, it just clips on. So, I guess put the tab in the back. There we go. Put 
probably should have done this before I put like the front cover on, but it should looks like it's all going in there pretty good. This thing fires up, that'd be kind of sweet. <laughs> like I said, I just got excited and wanted to get everything bolted back together. And then, at least I know. I have everything. Uh, nothing got accidentally thrown out over the years. I think it, apparently it's been sitting there at his place for a while, so. Good. There is this metal, uh, metal bar here that goes underneath. I almost forgot about that. There's no fuel in it yet. Just oil, so I do have to be careful that I don't Oh, this went on this side in the back. Not 100% sure what it's for. Now, help me understand. There we go. I'll take the ground effects back off. Good deal. Tighten this up. Chicken dinner. 
Well, I guess we're gonna wrap this one up. It runs. It has output. And counting the, the hone, and I had like 20 bucks in the Honda head gasket that I'm not sure if it really was a Honda head gasket. Uh, I had about around 20, 20 to 25 in the rings. And that's, that's it. So you got the hone, which was 15, and then the, uh, like I said, the rings and the head gasket. I really needed to have like a piston install tool, but I did it with two screwdrivers and I had somebody help. That was, I'm not real proud of that, but it worked. So, um, hey, I'm, I'm tickled. So, keep this one uh, on standby for when I need a generator real quick. I have one out in my shed that's more, it's not really easy to move and this one's not too bad i mean don't get me wrong it's got some weight it's not like those little ones and two thousands this this is a beefy boy but it's it's not terrible and it's really handy how they have the wheels and the the handle already built into this so. i hope to get this edited down to where it's not crazy um but we'll see uh i want to put as much in there that is as i think that would needed for somebody to think that they could handle this because it wasn't that bad considering i got it and it was already half tore apart oh i i basically tore the engine apart put the engine you know honed the cylinder uh replaced the the valve seal i did forget that put a valve seal on it and yeah that was you know the rest of it was put it back together so uh just uh like the video Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope some of you guys and girls get some uh, decent use out of this video. Thanks.